Hello and welcome back to the Global Colonization Project. Last episode we uh, left this rocket quite happily orbiting Kerbin. This is the first rocket we actually got into orbit and very well it went too. Between episodes I've also done a little bit of part testing so we've got a little bit extra funds than we had at the end of the previous episode. The most important thing though is that we also picked up a contract to basically come back from orbit so we might as well try it with this craft see how it goes we've got almost no fuel and not an awful lot of power to be perfectly honest and most importantly we have no connection to the KSC so we're going to have to time accelerate round until we get connection so let's do that. No, don't go too fast. Going too fast would be a serious mistake. There we go. We have a connection. We're now over the KSC. Well, sort of over the KSC. We have it above the horizon, at least. So, um, let's get the flight computer and basically turn it off so we can do everything we want to. Turn SAS on. Before we do anything, let's make sure that we've actually set our parachute to open at a, at a relatively reasonable time. Um, let's put the pre-deployment pressure up to something a little bit more sensible, just in case. Now we can't turn this craft at all with just SAS on. That does nothing at all, so we actually need to have the, the uh, engine running. Let's turn it on ever so slightly and turn it round. So we are facing prograde. No, so we are facing retrograde even. Let's just shut the engine off so we can get a quick save because <laughs> we don't want this to go horribly wrong. So we're going to re enter. The atmosphere in a moment. We'll see how well we do with this. Perhaps this is now within the atmosphere. Let's be a bit violent about it. See how this goes. Uh, deploy the chute so it will actually open. Fingers crossed. And, um, well, let's see how it goes. Time accelerate to re entry. So we are back in the atmosphere. We still have connection at the moment. Whether we'll still have a connection when we come down is another matter entirely. I doubt it somehow. Speed up time. It's physics. Turn up the physics warp. We still have a connection, amazingly. Craft is happily orienting itself in roughly the right direction, and we've lost our connection. So we are now completely at the mercy of what the physics decides to do. We're not coming down all that quickly. We're probably going to come down in the dark, or at the very least, at sunset. Sun's quite high here, and there's our temperature gauges on... what's that on? On the fins, I think. We're probably going to lose certain things, but provided we get the probe back, provided the probe survives, we should manage to complete the contract. So the first fireworks of the series. Not all that violent. My only worry really is if the parachute goes horribly up in flames, as it were. Beep from probe. There you go, the fins. Some of the fins, anyway. Actually, that spin might help. That's all the fins gone.
take fireworks. We are at what 31k nearly, and descending. Something getting slightly warm. Never mind. Parachute seems to be fine. We don't actually need the flight computer anymore. We're going to land in water, according to Kerbal Engineer. Won't be too bad. Below Mach 4. Below 1,000 metres per second. Below Mach 3. And parachute survived. Now, will it open? Place your bets now. We do have real shoot. So, we should be okay. It survived the entry anyway. So below seven and a half thousand, below seven thousand. There goes the shoot. So yes, it works. <laughs> it works. That should now deploy and uh, bring us down to a nice, gentle splashdown. Success. Success. Below five meters per second. Speed coming down. How? Brilliant and yes, glorious sunset. How lovely. Just grab a screenshot because why not have a screenshot of a glorious sunset with a rocket descending on its parachute? Moon is nearly full at the moment, which is nice, and there off in the distance, that's probably Mimus. Success. We are down. We are down and the probe has survived. That's the important thing. Let's just check our messages. Explore Kerbin. That's the contract completed. 32,000 funds. Four sites and seven reputation. Lovely. And we've now got one of the world's first milestones completed. That's another 24,000. Two sites and five reputation. Just for getting back. How wonderful. Oh, we've got another strategy available as well. Lovely. So, we'll recover this and uh, see if it actually gives us anything else. See what we get back from it in terms of the funds from recovering the parts. And so here we are on the surface, back at the KSC. Having a look at our mission summary, that got us a full 10 science, which is not to be sniffed at, let's face it. And 1,343 funds recovered. Nice. We are just shy now of uh, 300k, which is a good healthy amount, considering what we've got to do next. Let's just jump into Mission Control and review oh, wow. the, um, the contracts we have at the moment. Point a dish out from Kerbin. Well, that'll be something we have to do at some point anyway, so that's why we've got that. Search the Skies is ongoing. Mm -hmm. That will just take forever. But here is the important one. Create a network for Kerbin. We need commsats. We need at least four commsats for this network. So we've got to put up four different satellites and have them working as a, as a commsat network so we can communicate back to the KSC more or less from anywhere in low Kerbin orbit, which obviously, as we've seen with that last craft, we can't yet do. 300,000 funds for doing it. No science for doing this, but it will help after a period of time to actually have the ability to uh, communicate properly. And that's what this will help us do. So I will meet you in the VAB to show you Possibly one of the ugliest rockets you have ever seen. So yes, here it is, one of the um, ugliest and most cumbersome rockets I think I've certainly ever put together. Um, but it should work, just. That's the plan anyway. It's worked in testing. Yes, it worked in testing. Can you tell I'm not that confident? Mm. I've had to actually upgrade VAB because to make sure that this works it's actually 80 parts. Um, best we've got in terms of liquid fuel tanks at the moment 
is the Oscar B. And you need loads of them to be able to power this thing into space. Um, we have underneath it five spacely engines. And to get it going, we've got four Astro solid fuel boosters just to get it up into the sky. Not that that will take it very far, but it'll it'll be a start. We've then got the outer four liquid tanks that will drop away and leave the middle one to keep going for a bit. Parachutes on everything because we do have stage recovery. And so, <laughs> if anything else, we might get a little bit of money back. Not a huge amount, but we'll get some of it back at least. The main thing, however, is the bit at the top. That is the actual satellite. It's powered by the Probodobodyne Octo with a couple of batteries on it, the Z100s, and 3.2 solar panels, and of course the Communitron 16. The plan for these is uh, basically to send four of them up and put them at a height of about 750 kilometers and then line them all up so they're in the right place can all talk to KSC through each other if need be yeah that's the plan let's see how it goes let's stick it on the launch pad and get it into the sky so here we are on the launch pad with the first of our communications satellites let's turn SAS on and a final check of the staging and just as well we did because the parachutes are all in the wrong place. Let's um, move all of the parachutes into their own stage out of the way. We don't want them firing now. That would be a problem. So staging is now correct. We are ready to go. So let's go. This rocket does need to go up fairly steeply. If we tilt over too far too soon, it um, doesn't like it. Let's put it that way. So this is not anything like a textbook launch. Solid rocket boosters away and um, Let's increase the thrust so we don't slow down too much. This second stage doesn't quite have the thrust to weight ratio. So it takes its time to start picking up speed again. And not having it at full thrust immediately will have caused us a slight problem. Oh, and there's the solid stages hitting the ground which is why it was pointless to put parachutes onto those solid rocket boosters so keep going vertical a bit actually at this point we could probably start to tilt ever slightly not by much just tilting it across and resetting SAS The difficulty with this rocket has been uh, balancing how many parts and how much weight it actually has with the power of the engines we have. We could do with something a little bit more powerful, but as we don't have them, we stuck with this. Never mind, it works. Inclination is not too bad. It is getting a bit further from zero than we would like but the contract says below one so we'll be all right and even if it goes a long way above one we can always correct that later one thing we do need to remember to do before we get into our final stage though is to um, activate the communitron because otherwise we won't be able to talk to the satellite that would be a major problem that would mean we would have to launch it all over again, and as we've got to launch it four times anyway, don't really fancy doing it five or even six. 
So yes, we've got to remember to <laughs> deploy the communitron. The antenna we don't have to deploy is actually on one of the earlier stages. There actually, there's actually more than one of them as well, for symmetry's sake, just to make sure they're balanced. Um, but they are on, a, on an earlier stage. So once we actually get to the actual rocket, we will be um, struggling if we haven't remembered to um, activate the communications. We can tilt a little bit more than that now we're higher up. And actually that's starting to pull the inclination back. Actually it's really pulling the inclination back. All these figures are in the uh, Kerbal Engineer readouts uh, to top and bottom. The top one is essentially ground details and speed details, whereas the one next to the nav ball is all to do with orbit and what we've actually got on the vessel. And as you can see, we're going up incredibly steeply. Now we're at 30k, we could actually start to tip over a little bit more. Just doing this ever so gently and uh, resetting SAS quite regularly. Stage that one. Taking it up to an apoapsis of about 90, we're already over 80. So actually we can tip over quite a lot now. And start to really get our horizontal speed going. We will have to circularise on the actual final stage itself. There's 90, let's just go a little bit higher. Push the apparatus away a bit. So there's that. Let's um, come into the map view and very quickly add manoeuvre and use precise manoeuvre to make sure that it is at the apoapsis and to circularise. We'll also put that into the flight computer. So we click node to take to point at the node and execute so it does it. That way if we do lose connection it will still do it. And now we're above the, the atmosphere we can actually activate the communitron and activate solar panels as well. So let's extend those. I really should put these on action groups. I'm also going to run out of delta V in this stage. This is a huge burn as well. Huge, huge burn. Burn time of 1 minute 42 seconds. Which is enormous. We do have enough Delta V though. So deploying to our final stage, this is our actual satellite. These are the Spider engines, but I uh, haven't got an enormous amount of thrust, but on a vessel this size, do wonderfully well. This is just going to take its time to get into something approaching a circular orbit. We still haven't reached our apoapsis either. We have just shy of two minutes burn time left in the rocket and we've got one minute just over one minute to burn still with this node but we are successfully in space with the sun behind us and above us which does, actually is making these a little bit not brilliant in terms of keeping us powered however we're doing okay So there's Apoapsis. Oh no, not quite. We are still away from it. Our Apoapsis is pushing away from us ever so slightly and climbing, which is not necessarily a problem. This is essentially a parking orbit. We'll have, what, just under a thousand Delta V left looking at that once this is actually in orbit. We will put this one into its final orbit 
before we send the others up because then we know what we're aiming at. And I don't need to uh, deactivate anything because the flight computer is doing absolutely everything here. And we still have a, co a connection which is marvellous. Might have to do a little quick correction once this is completed. No, we are actually in orbit. It's not all that circular. It's not very circular, but we are in a stable orbit. We have an apoapsis of 110 and a periapsis of 75. So, yes, it's not particularly circular, but it's stable. It will do. So, let's make sure... Probably the best place to do it is at the periapsis, because that's closer. That will mean it costs a slightly less delta V, not an enormous amount. So, put the node on the periapsis. Now, we've got to do this quite quickly, because otherwise we will lose connection. 750 is the target altitude. Wrong way. Let's just bring that down, get it as close to 750 as we can. That'll do. Point at the node and execute that burn. Please, flight computer. And we'll do that when we get there. So let's just come back to our satellite, which is successfully in orbit. Let's let's not forget that we are actually in orbit. Wonderfully. Let's time accelerate round to the manoeuvre node. 17 second burn. Which isn't too bad at all, really. We have 45, we're just shy of 46 seconds of, of actual burn time in this satellite left. And the flight computer is actually putting an alarm into Kerbal alarm, alarm clock as well, if I could speak. Which is why we're getting that twice. Might need to have a look at the settings of that and stop it doing it. Don't really want manoeuvre node alarms twice. And it also stops you three minutes out. So throttle back and just let the flight computer do it. Remote tech is wonderful for this this flight computer. You can execute some rather precise burns. It's actually most of the time, especially around Kerbin, rather accurate. There we go, we have an apoapsis height of 749777. And slightly climbing as well, which is interesting. So there's our apoapsis. We do not currently have a connection to the KSC. So we'll add a manoeuvre at the apoapsis of this orbit and basically just tell it to circularise. We also, of course, need to check our inclination, which is actually below 1 at the moment, which means that that is absolutely fine for the contract. Where is the contract? Periapsis above 248,528 metres, eccentricity below 0 0.004, which hopefully it will be once we've circularised, and an inclination of below 1 degree, which we currently are. So actually the launch was very, very successful. We might be able to get that a little bit better, to be honest. But let's um, time warp round until we actually have a connection. Like that. Point at the node. And again, execute. 296 metres per second. We have 614 in the tank. Which is fine. So let's time warp up to it. And this mission so far has taken just shy of an hour. You just delete all of the alarms. Pull back and go. 
We still have a connection as well, so the KSC is now in darkness. And there we go. There is our orbit. There is our first communication satellite successfully in orbit. Now the important thing is to take notice of the orbital period because with the other three that's what we've got to match. It's not necessarily about the height or the eccentricity of the orbit or even the inclination. It's the orbital period that's important. We want those to be as close together as possible. So we need to take note of what this is. 1 hour 27 minutes 22.372 seconds. That's going to be tricky. We have in this 318 meters per second left. That should be enough with the others to trim it ever so slightly. We'll see how that goes. Before we do anything, I'm actually going to turn the flight computer off and put SAS back on. Actually, no, turn to point radial in for the moment, then turn the flight computer off and put SAS on, because then we can actually angle our satellite so that we've got the uh, solar panels above and below, and then turn it to point radial in again, and then we'll leave it like that. That will allow these solar panels to turn and face the sun no matter where the sun is. If we left this pointing normal with these solar panels pointing at the sun, of course coping will move and therefore the sun will end up in a different position. But the uh, probe would still point in exactly the same direction. So that's why I'm doing that, to make sure that those solar panels can always point at the sun. So there's our first communication satellite in space. Let's just make sure we're, re we're naming it the right thing. Comsat 1. And we'll say that this is a relay. So there we go. Our first communication satellite in space, in its orbit. Just another three to do. I'll be back when the other three are in their parking orbits. Before we launch the others though, we do have some debris to clear up, which actually will give us a little bit of money back, so we'll recover that debris that actually landed at the launch pad. And let's check what we got back from our stages being recovered. So let's just check our messages. Stage, Comsat debris recovered 50 kilometers from KSC, which actually is not bad. Total refund 1,573 and another 1,573 for that one, 1,574 for that one, for the next one 1,574 again, 2,249 for the for that stage though, that's probably the middle one. Terminal velocity of 9.45, less than 12 needed, so yeah that's, yes, that, yes that's got the reflectrons on, so that's the uh, penultimate stage. And we've also completed another milestone. Broken a speed record of two and a half thousand meters per second, which is helpful. And there's a huge shadow just moving across the KSC because the sun is setting. And we'll gather that bit of debris as well. So, and um, looking at the timings of this episode, we have reached the end of our allotted time. I'm trying to keep these episodes as close to half an hour as I possibly can. So, uh, join me in episode six, when we will have our other three communication satellites in their parking orbits, and then starts the endless business of um, lining them all up. Yes, they've all got to be in the right place and in the right orbital period. This is going to take forever. So we'll do it in episode six. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.